All right, so here I've got a nice limit problem involving a recursively defined sequence from the 2021 Chinese math competition for undergraduate students. We'll define a sequence x sub n by x zero equals one, and then x n plus one is the natural log of one plus x n, and that holds for values of n bigger than or equal to zero. Then our goal is to evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of n times x sub n. So the first thing that we'll do is find the limit of the x sub n sequence. Observe that this limit is not very interesting unless that limit is zero. Because if that limit is a non-zero real number, then this fact that we're letting n go to infinity and we're multiplying by n will tell you that this limit will trend off to infinity. Furthermore, if x sub n has a limit which is infinite, you have the same kind of simplicity in there. So we expect the limit of this x sub n sequence to be zero. So let's see if we can show that. And we'll show that using the monotone convergence theorem. So let's make our following claim, which has to do with the boundedness and well, the decreasingness of our sequence. So we're gonna show that zero is less than x sub n plus one, which is less than x sub n. And this is gonna be true for all n bigger than or equal to zero. And perhaps you would wanna do like a quick calculation to make sure that we see this decreasing just right off the bat. And let's observe that x sub one is the natural log of two, you know, just by using our recursion, which is less than the natural log of e, because e is bigger than two and the natural log is an increasing function. The natural log of e is one, which is equal to x sub zero. So maybe clearing the middle here, we have x one is less than x zero. So it's at least decreasing at the very beginning. And in fact, both of these are bigger than zero. So for our proof of this claim, this uh, box over there takes care of our base case. So often when you're doing like a math contest type problem, your base case is really wrapped up in your exploration at the beginning as you're kind of coming to grips with the behavior of the problem or the objects in the problem. Okay, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So we'll suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, we have the statement holding. So in other words, zero is less than x sub k plus one, which is less than x sub k. And now what we'll do is simply add one to all parts of this inequality. So we'll get one is less than x sub k plus one plus one, which is less than x sub k plus one. The inequality clearly stays in the same direction if you add one. And now we're gonna take the natural log and maybe we'll notate this here. So here we're adding one, here we're doing the natural log of all of that stuff. So we'll have the natural log of one is zero. And then here we'll have the natural log of xk plus one plus one. And then here we'll have the natural log of xk plus one. But everything is immediately done because this natural log of xk plus one plus one is simply xk plus two. And then this term right here is simply xk plus one by the definitions of our sequences. So starting with this assumption and ending with this assumption, well, that's exactly the induction step, which along with the base case confirms that we have a decreasing sequence that is bound below by zero, which means this sequence has a limit. So now let's calculate that limit. So we just determined that our sequence x sub n converges. Now we're gonna calculate the limit. So let's introduce the following notation. We'll say capital L is this limit as n approaches infinity of x sub n. But that's the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of x sub n plus one. That's actually a very simple result that you generally prove like in a calculus or maybe at the very beginning of a real analysis class. But now we'll rewrite x sub n plus one using our recursion over here. So that's gonna give us the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of x sub n plus one. 
But now the logarithm is a continuous function, so we can factor it out of the limit. And that leaves us with the natural log of one plus L. Oh, but now we simply need to solve the equation L equals the natural log of one plus L, which is in fact a little bit trickier than you might think. So let's consider the following function. And that function will be, you know, essentially the difference in the two sides of this equation, but with a variable. So I'll call this f of x, it'll be x minus the natural log of one plus x. And then let's observe that if we take the derivative here, we'll get one minus one over x plus one, just by simple derivative rules. But observe that for x values that are positive, one minus one over x plus one is always positive. So in other words, this is positive if x is positive. Well, what does that mean? That means that this is a strictly increasing function. So f is strictly increasing and continuous on uh, the interval from zero to infinity, including zero. We can throw that end point in and it'll still be increasing and continuous. But strictly increasing and continuous means that f is a one-to-one -one function. In other words, an injective function. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that f of x equals zero has at most one solution on this interval from zero to infinity. So it could have zero solutions, but if it had more than one solution, then that would contradict the fact that this thing is one to one. But let's observe that f of zero is simply equal to, let's see, one minus the natural log of one, which is equal to zero. Oh, so that means zero is the only solution to x or f of x equals zero, the only root of the function f of x but that's also a solution to the equation that I have underlined there in purple, but that means that our limit has to be zero. So that means we have L equals zero. Okay, so good, we know the limit of our recursively defined sequence. Now let's see how that can help us find, well, the limit in question. So now we're ready to look at the limit in question, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of n times x sub n. I'm gonna rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity of n over x or one over x sub n. And that may seem kind of silly, but let's notice as n goes to infinity, that numerator is going to infinity and the denominator is going to, well, one over zero, which is infinity because we're actually going to zero from above. So this is of type infinity over infinity, which motivates us to use L'Hopital's rule, but we're dealing with sequences here. And there's not really the exact copy of L'Hopital's rule, but there's something good called the Stoltz-Cesaro theorem, which is like a discrete L'Hopital's rule. So let's maybe sketch out what that says over here. I'm gonna leave off some of the hypotheses. Maybe go ahead and look them up if you want to. I think like looking up, up, up on your own gives you a nice opportunity to fall down a rabbit hole and learn some extra stuff instead of just relying on me to like fill in all of the hypotheses and stuff. So I am doing it a little bit because I'm lazy, but I also think that it provides a nice opportunity. Okay, so anyway, Stoltz-Cesaro theorem says something like this. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one minus a n over b n plus one minus b n. So we can view that uh, difference, a n plus one minus a n, as the discrete derivative, delta a n, and the same thing for the denominator, delta b n, or sometimes called the forward difference operator. Okay, so let's see how that applies here. So that's gonna leave us with the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one minus n over one over xn plus one minus one over xn. 
But let's see what we get. That'll give us this limit as n goes to infinity. We have one in the numerator. Then putting stuff together in the denominator will give us, let's see, xn minus xn plus one over the product xn times xn plus one. But now flipping that over, we'll have this limit as n goes to infinity of xn times xn plus one over xn minus xn plus one. But now I'm gonna rewrite those xn plus ones using our recursion. So that's gonna be equal to this limit as n approaches infinity of xn times the natural log of one plus xn over xn minus the natural log of one plus xn. But now observe that we've got this sequence that's composed inside of a continuous function in the numerator and a continuous function in the denominator. And we've got exactly the same place in the sequence, the nth place existing everywhere. So that allows me to rewrite this as the limit as t goes to zero, well, y to zero, because that's the limit of our xn sequence, which we proved before, of t times the natural log of one plus t over t minus the natural log of one plus t. But now if we look at that, that's another indeterminate form of type zero over zero, which we can use the actual L'Hopital's rule on because we have functions. So let's see, L'Hopital's rule one time will give us the limit as t goes to zero of, let's see, uh, t over one plus t, and then minus the natural log of, or plus the natural log of one plus t, I should say. Then in the denominator, we have one minus one over one plus t. Now observe that that's still type zero over zero, but I can use L'Hopital's rule again, but before doing that, I'd like to take this t over one plus t object and rewrite it as one minus one over one plus t. And so you can see that by exchanging the one for one plus t over one plus t, and then seeing that the ones cancel. Okay, so now using L'Hopital's rule one more time, will give us the limit as t goes to zero of, so we'll have one over one plus t quantity squared, and then plus one over one plus t, all over, one over one plus t quantity squared. But now we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by one plus t quantity squared, and we'll be left with the limit as t goes to a zero of one plus one plus t. So it's nice how that all cancels down, but as t goes to zero, that clearly goes to one plus one plus zero, in other words, the number two. So that's our final limit, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.